Hello, and welcome to Happy Chithonian. I'm Kristoff. Uh, this video is going to be a video of me playing an adventure game with four of my friends, Kai, Mercury, Matt, uh, and Clovis. Uh, we played through the Emmy Award-nominated Waking of Willoughby Hall, a dense, dynamic, freaking interactive, awesome adventure from Ben Milton of Questing Beast, one of my favorites. It has a goose, all right? And we played through this hot toddy with Adventure Hour, currently my favorite system. Rules ultralight, really cool. I just love it, it's perfect. And to generate characters, we used my new invention, All Dice 2, Haunted Hall, Haunted House. <laughs> Uh, with this, you grab all your dice, you roll them, and with that fistful of dice, you consult the tables, and you quickly generate a character. We generated some fun characters with this, I think. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the video proper, three things per the rules of the adventure. As we went along, I did use a d6 to check for random encounters. There are some good random encounter tables in here. Uh, every 10 minutes of in-game time, or every time players move from one room to another, I checked. Uh, I also used the old-school rule of using 2d6 to determine most creatures' reaction. Are they positive? Are they negative? Are they neutral? And to determine their uh, reactions in combat. So once they took some hits, are they going to run away or not, using morale. Uh, that makes it dynamic and fun for me. I don't know what's going to happen. The dice tell me. Finally, excited about this, I cut out the adventure on some kind of heavier paper. I also uh, traced out the adventure location, the manor, on the paper. So as the players went through, I'd take these little bits and tape them on. So they actually got to every room in the adventure. That's why this is all filled out. But I was putting up the rooms on one by one. That was great because we got the old school kind of mapping feel, but it was easy. We could see where they were. We could strategize. And one person noticed there was a secret room from a hole in the map. This just made my year uh what else yeah let's get to the video it's five hours long i would watch it in bits and bobs take care of yourselves uh, and i have added a commentary track on there so if you turn on the closed captioning you can see what was going through my head and my kind of techniques and philosophy uh, as a game runner also <laughs> we lost footage in the middle but there is still audio and i put some creative fun dynamic visuals in there for those uh, the parts that are relevant to what's going on in the game. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy, find it fruitful and bootful and all of the above. <laughs> Play ball! Friends, we are gathered here today, 33rd anniversary of my birth, to play through an adventure called The Waking of Willoughby Hall. Mysterious paper dropped from there, as you said. I I need that. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. So that's why it's spooky. Right. <laughs> it's the it's the soul of the adventure. <laughs> um, there's a dilapidated, over a century abandoned manor called Willoughby Hall that was the haunt of the Black Moon Society, purportedly full of such wondrous treasures as vases from the purple land of Yun Suin and the mummified hand of Yid and other great things. Also, probably haunted. So uh, <laughs> most people have just not gone there. Guys, I think the Black Moon Society did more than deliver pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> no. What, uh, what planet are they on? This is Orth. So oh, your basic, <laughs> basic medieval Earthy-ish kind oh. of... We get to do a medieval Orth. Pre-warp society. Definitely a pre-warp society. We could go to Earth. Orth. <laughs> Either Orth is the, is the campaign setting. <laughs> I've made these character creators that tell you dice to roll. They have little pictures oh, of the dice. And once you roll your d4, it'll direct you to two more tables. 
So if you roll the yellow ones, then you roll on these two yellow tables. Yeah. Pretty shiny. Two blue tables. Do we have a sheet to fill things in on, or just I a note card? Do you two have to check? Yeah. Oh well, fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Pipeweed, a thousand marbles, or a shovel. All this equipment, this is good. Let's try your choice. I am a. Um, yeah, why don't we go around the table? We can start with Mercury. Okay, so Captain Dex de Bloon. Um, never really was a captain, but it looks good on paper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really, she was the ship's, the ship's oh. chaplain. And, you know, when one of the boys was in the grip of old Davy, she could pull them from the icy waves and help them move on in spite of their failings. Uh, she's still got one of her own crew following her around. She's falling apart at the edges and a bit sensitive to the chills. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep them wrapped up in a blanket, but old Smee the Bosun is still with her, even after what happened to the rest of them. <laughs> so the uh, role is Drifter. Uh -huh. um, she is at her inner heart of hearts a pirate and most interested in shaking this place down for everything she can get. Um, her archetype is Necromancer with Zombie Ballet. That would be Smee, who she has long ago rescued from the grip of Davy Jones, but she will do the same for any of you, her, her bosom shipmates. Should old St. Davy get his cold claws into you, there is still life beyond. Um, she wields a trident, because everyone's got to try. And uh, carries around lockpicks and a match that can melt through metal. That's pretty cool. That's nice. So you rolled the the All attendant that. the. Uh... I rolled my archetype as necromancer with zombie valet. Would you have a, a that was another role? You have a, a guy following you around? Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the pages oh, after. There's an archetype and bonus item roll, <laughs> and mine happened to come. My archetype happened to come with a valet. Bonus <laughs> oh, <this laughs> <is> valet. <laughs> All right, well, my, uh, my character is Father Pianist. <laughs> He's a church type, an organist, uh, wearing thick glasses, and he carries a book of hymns, and he's got some magic scrolls, and a lantern and oil. So, I'd say he's a little low on the magic department. Unless the do these things do any magic? Book of hymns and all that kind of stuff? Uh the Flood Scroll does. Nothing else. Yeah. All right. Book of Hymns has the magic of music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well now I'm an adventurer and wander because they kicked me out of the church because I've kept playing a raucous type of music on the organ that I call rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> But the, the, the bishop didn't like it. I don't know what we have in many. Yep. In, uh, I don't know a secular term for bishop. But anyway. You are now the the uh, expert on what churches are in this world. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's how it goes. Not everyone is ready to accept that the rocks are St. Davy's will. <laughs> and I had an affair with a pagan, so... They, they didn't like that much. Either, so. I'm not technically excommunicated. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not welcome back in that particular church. <laughs> oh, what do I got? I got uh, Dr. Hemler, a retired hero who's an amnesiac wizard. <laughs> He does not recall what doctorate he has. <laughs> <laughs> he is quite sure his huge staple is an indication he has misplaced a very large book <laughs> and argues with his talking sword on the subject to no end. <laughs> That's a construction staple. That doesn't make any sense. Look at the bends. <laughs>
<laughs> Clearly it was used to be in the paper. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Again, the talking sword is not his weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Forged by the elves a thousand years ago. Oh. That's a whole this guy around. Oh, God. It's like his best friend. That's <laughs> <laughs> wait, the talking sword is not your weapon. It's not my weapon. In fact, the huge stapler is what I roll oh. for weapon. <laughs> huge staple. Huge staple. Oh, yes. just the staple. It's like a giant bent piece of It's just a bent <laughs> piece of staple. <laughs> That's, that's bizarre, man. That's pretty bizarre that that would be in there. As you want to collate these goons. Alright, uh, yeah. I'm Jorg the Leg Grub, uh, a retired hero and mellow barbarian. My greatest claim to fame as a, as a hero was uh, when I was invited to a, 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 a state dinner that I, because of my, as I assumed, for fighting off bandits in the local area and all that. But uh, <laughs> while I was there, I came to understand that the, the, the Lord who had invited me was evil. They were doing human sacrifices and whatnot. Oh. <laughs> so I ripped off the table leg and beat him to death <laughs> with it. And uh, that's why I'm known as the leg. <laughs> and I carry that table leg with me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> the paint's feeling, but it's still good for a beaten. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's what I got. I, I also carry a long pole with me. It's ten feet long. I thought it would be an upgrade from the leg, but it just doesn't do the same thing. <laughs> and my back's not as good as it used to be. I wear a lifting belt to make sure nothing pops out of position. And I'm, you know, just trying to give people advice on how to hear all these days. <laughs> well, clearly you know. No. It's yeah. not the length of the yard arm. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> You're better the school of the leg. <laughs> I'm looking for leg in here. <laughs> table leg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I have a table leg. Yeah. <laughs> Are these all different? I'm just not seeing it. Oh, there it is. Some <laughs> weapons. Okay. This is expedition. <laughs> You're looking for table like you gotta look at the weapons. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Hemler, Captain Dubloon, Father Father <laughs> Venus, <laughs> and Jorg the Leg, <laughs> You've banded together, uh, and followed rumor and map to Willoughby Hall. This is sort of an outline of what it looks like. Uh, it's surrounded. It's in the middle midst of the woods, uh, outside the town of Turnip Hill. It's surrounded by a 200-foot clearing. Uh, windows all along both the first and second story. You can see there are two great towers that go up. One has like a pointed roof, one's just flat. Um, and it stands before you rather dilapidated and dusty, but rumored to be full of horrors and wonders. How do you approach? What do you do? All right, crew. <laughs> Captain Dex puts her arms up for a call. Yes, Captain. All right. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. <clears throat> We've faced untold <laughs> horrors of the deep. Well, of the gate. I've faced untold horrors of the deep, <laughs> and you all have been around the block too. We've all just met. <laughs> sure. Okay. okay. Well, just ran across each other in front of the. In front of the <laughs> No, we, we've met before, remember? Right. So yeah. The length kind of looks at you blankly. Of our association, right. Father, it's the depth of our feeling. <laughs> and I know I can trust you. Yes. I don't usually understand what you're saying, but I agree with it. <laughs> well, none of us need to be invited in, I take it. No, I think that's right. Vampires. Yeah, vampires. I was just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> This is a good test. <laughs> well, should we see if it's unlocked? Mm. The front door. We're at the front door, is there? The you front know, door I as you approach. No. Never tried that before. <laughs> <laughs> but it might save some time or some pain to the old heels. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go up to the door and see if it'll open or not. It will open. 
and you can see in oh, nice. the Great Hall, which has uh, a two-story room. So you can see the black marble floor before you, but it goes up two stories, and you can see a grand staircase at the back. Uh, it's up to this value-strotted galleries that look down. Uh, there are 12 black marble pillars. Each has some kind of uh, ornamentation on it. Uh, the ceiling is midnight blue with like white speckles of some kind, and there's a wrought iron chandelier hanging there. Mm. Uh, these doors aren't open, but this kind of you can tell by the hinges which way they would open. Yeah. Captain Dex switches her eye patch to the other eye and opens <laughs> the bright blue one that is already well adapted to the color of midnight blue ceilings. Very nice. You can see that at the center of the ceiling, those dots are actually uh, depicting stars, and it is the constellation familiar to sailors, the constellation of the door. Go in golden stars. Mm -hmm. Ah, the door. Gateway to the riches of the other hemisphere. <laughs> it's good important, my brothers. Didn't we just come through the door? The other one. Right. I'll go ahead and use my staff to knock one on the, the left door. Hello? Anybody home? Echo. 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 <laughs> the earth shakes around oh. you. And you can hear a roaring voice from beyond the field that you've come from. Mildred! You look out and see... The giant head, <laughs> the giant rising over the horizon. He's actually got a big white beard and a, and a bathrobe. Uh, so imagine this guy with a white beard and a bathrobe, uh, and instead of a, uh, sp a spear, he's swinging a bell on a, on a rope. My soul is wounded, Mildred! And you see uh, several hundred yards in front of him, out from the forest, Three people are running, and one of them has a goose under their arms. <laughs> oh, I don't think all of Davy's cold foam will douse that temper. Let's get inside before he catches us. Does it look like they can make it? Oh, yeah. who cares? They're not far. <laughs> who cares? Oh, they're running from him? I, uh, yes. I, I care a little. <laughs> Come on. How, how far Move those been? legs. Do you think Mildred's the goose? Or one of the other three? Ahead of him, but he's closing in. He's closing in. You know what? Because I am a priest, I want to take out my blowgun and try and hit the giant in the eye. Very nice. With my blowgun. Because you are a priest. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not going to shut the door on him. <laughs> Leave him outside. He gets close. He gets close. Now that we're thinking about combat, I'll tell you how combat works. In okay. this system... Uh, if you do a melee strike against somebody, you roll that d6. Four, five, six, you hit them. If there's any question of right whether or not it hits. Sometimes you can just hit somebody, it automatically hits. Right? Nope. They're asleep or something. But uh, if you, well, four, five, six, it hits them. One, two, three, they hit you. Okay. With your blowgun, you have kind of, this is a little convoluted, but you have three strikes. You'll shoot. If it hits them, you have your full ammo allotment still. Uh -huh. If you miss, then there is a 50% chance that you're down one of those abstract three ammos. So every time you miss, there's a 50% chance of totally losing your ammo or your ammo diminished. I only have three total? It's abstract, because you could hit, it's hit, a magic hit, 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 and never run out. But if you okay. miss, every time you miss, there's a 50% chance that it goes down. Um, yeah, so we're not tracking him. gives up. Yeah. <laughs> there's no <laughs> Oh, it heated up the barrel too much. <laughs> and if you take a hit yourself, you gain an injury, which we'll write down depending on what kind of blow it is. Uh, if you take two injuries, you're taken out of the action. And to heal, you have to somehow combine rest and food and magic. Can't just rest, can't just do food, can't just do magic. You have to somehow combine them creatively to heal. Um, to undo your injuries. You, so technically, each of you has like two hits. If anybody had an armored thing, which I don't think anybody did, that you could bust that for a hit. But there might be armor inside that you could find too. So if you're like about to take an injury, you could be like, no, I just sacrificed my armor. <laughs> Have Smee with me. <laughs> can I put Smee in front of me? Yeah, Smee, I think Smee can totally count as armor. Smee has been like shivering in back, <laughs> with my little blanket wrapped around him so oh, far. No. <laughs> um, so you each have two hits. You can tell just by looking at this guy, he has about 12. 
<laughs> Roll your D6, 4, 5, 6 will mean that your blowgun hits, 1, 2, 3. But I, I can't aim for a specific, like, I... You can't. And at any point, if you want to say something like, I want to hit him directly in the eye, or I want to make him fall, or do anything other than just take a hit, yeah. you can give that choice to me, okay. but then I choose. And I can do the same to you. I can be like, do you want to take an injury or uh, fall unconscious to sleep? And then you can say yes or no. Yeah. Okay. So if you get four, five, or six, I will... I oh, you decide if I hit his eye or not. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Three. All right, roll one more time. If it's a one, two, three, I you lose my losing uh, some lose a shot. Yeah, you're great. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Nice. So the, it does pepper him right in the face, and he's got a little blowgun dart there, but he just doesn't even seem to notice. It just like hits his beard, and it's hanging there. <laughs> oh, three villains! I will eat thee with chickens. <laughs> Question. What is this? Mind swap contract. What? Uh, I'm sorry. What? So you got a contract. I'll like if you get someone else to sign it, you swap minds with them. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, wait. Nice <laughs> shout out to the yes! giant. Yes! <laughs> I I have something for you. Is he, is he paying any attention? Uh, he's imagining you're like standing in the doorway. Yeah. He swings the bale of the bell flail. Uh, and throws it towards the front <laughs> of the building in reaction to you shouting out at him and okay. says, Thieves! <laughs> um, I'm going to say that uh, the fa father pianist is familiar <laughs> with uh, the nearby town of Turnip, uh, Turnip Hill. And you can see as the bell comes flying towards you, it's the Church of Turnip's Hill's famous oh, church, bell, church bell. Blessed by St. Orvald, foe of the undead. Uh, so, yeah, and this must then be the famed cloud giant Bonebreaker Tom, who lives not far away from, uh, from Turnip Hill on top of a cloud, underneath which the bones of many humans are left. He, treat, he thinks of humans as rodents and famously uh, flies into murderous tempers, which last quite a long time. Uh, as the bell flies towards you, uh, these three are running towards you and... There, why don't we both roll? I'll roll for these three. You roll for yourself to dodge the bell. <laughs> yep, trying to get four, five, six. If you miss, you get an injury from the bell. And they do too. All right. Bell flies. They come tumbling in. <laughs> you do too. He doesn't seem to uh, be the talking type, Bonebreaker Tom. Uh, as the bell strikes and busts the door into splinters and dum, 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 echoes through this room, and you see one of the pillars shudders and he, it just shudders at the top. Um, spider webs of light break onto that ornament I mentioned, which is a black moon. So there's a symbol of a black moon which at the uh, ringing of this holy bell cracks and spirits, wicked, skeletony, oh, demony spirits break out and just <laughs> and go into the house itself. Okay. And then he reels in the bell and the uh, three near you all tumble forward and they are these three you can see here. <laughs> Uh, oh, my not the giant. What either. have we to do now? <laughs> one, of them, one of them says, Run! Hide! <laughs> this, this girl with the goose puts her hand on the goose's mouth and runs <laughs> through that door before he can say anything. Uh, this one says, Friggin' A! And follows. And then he says, oh, oh, It's behind him at the giant getting closer and looks at you wide eyed. Yep, time to go. <laughs> so we can't shut the door. <laughs> the door is gone. gone. And gone. all of the, these windows, each of these little... There are windows all along the edge of the house, and oh, these okay. have all shattered now. <laughs> and the bell's fine. He's using that as a... A flail of, flail of, of sorts, mm -hmm. yes. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> ah. I yell out, Tom, you desecrated the holy church. Kneel so I can hear your confession. <laughs> <laughs> um. Seven, three bodies will I eat, he says. Oh, he no, forward. no, I'll start walking my way over to one of the side doors. Banging the, the second story. <laughs> oh. Follow oh, yeah, the second. Can, can he, he can't fit through the door, right? No. Oh, okay. He's stuck outside. 
You know, I've always fancied death by suffocation, not mastication. <laughs> Avoid, Mr. Tom. Certain references there. If you want to vacate this room, there are the stairs up, uh, the doors through which these uh, two of the adventurers gone. There's still this uh, fellow with a sword, uh, which is actually half a sword. It's like half of it's totally been lopped okay, off. Okay. And he's kind of shaking, just staring at you wide-eyed, and he's, he's kind of paralyzed. Uh, so they went through this door. You can go oh. or there's this door. The other, the other two strangers? <laughs> yep. Okay. You hear a goose honk in the distance. <laughs> Mildred! Oh, come along, good fellow. I've got good news and a sword for you. <laughs> Sir Walker Bob and his friends. It's not good news. <laughs> well, you Did can't you... fit through the wall. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. I'm a doctor. You can trust me on this. So you can't fit through that. Did you steal his goose? <laughs> steal? Steal is harsh word. <laughs> Is it true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, is goose, it, is, it is goose that lays golden egg, says Apocalypse Anne. Helmut will be famous. Oh, in that case, you liberated the goose from its unjust captivity on the cloud. Yeah, yeah. liberation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that goose has bigger things ahead of it. It should be traveling the world. That goose should be famous. It shouldn't be kept. And we should be famous, too, us. for liberators. Yes. <laughs> he smiles, his eyes, his eyes uh, close a little with his smile. From in the room, it seems the others have thrown open the door and continued on further in past this room, which is a dining room with an ancient table, oak chairs, uh, and there's a portrait hanging on one wall of a man with a black beard, a big silk robe, a bunch of books. He's got a red book in his hands. And uh, How big is the the door jar behind it. This book uh, is like a diary size, an A5 little book. I'm looking for it. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> How big is the portrait? Uh, the portrait is like five feet by three feet. It's a grand, sumptuous uh, <laughs> portrait. Chest behind it. Very nice. <laughs> uh, nothing behind it. As you get closer, you can see in the portrait, uh, he's. Uh, there's a door ajar behind him, and he's in like a little library or something, surrounded by books that are even stacked on the floor. Behind him in the picture. Yes, so you look to see that behind him in the picture, yeah. there is in whatever book filled room a door ajar, and through that open door, you can see in that room a large window with diamond shaped panes. Very nice. Does it look familiar? I mean, it, does, it, does yeah. the room look, have we run? I mean, the, the architecture looks similar. Okay. Similar, yep, yeah, from the same era. Sure. This building has a library. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be sure it's this building? Good point. Uh, similar architecture. All right. And, you know. <laughs> I just wanted a reasoning. Now, the real question is do you think he was a giant? Big picture. <laughs> he has um, a beard. Should we follow the? Oh right, you're still here. <laughs> you want to? You plan on being famous? Yes, the liberator of the golden egg. Oh, you can liberate me of this asshole. I pull out my talking sword. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like he can use a new one. <laughs> oh my! Helmut Half Sword is now Helmut Hall Sword. <laughs> Finally, someone strong enough to wield me. Oh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> you big windbag. <laughs> I'm not a windbag. I'm made of metal. Entirely other element. Uh, here we go again. The whole... <laughs> Name the element. Name the composition. <laughs> metal. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Oh, this is so nice. <laughs> I could kill Manny with this. <laughs> See how you hold up against blood and rust. <laughs> oh my, says the sword. <laughs> I love he's got a posh British ass. <laughs> well, you see any feathers around here? Where'd that uh, goose They all go? went through this door. Very yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. Yep, feathers flew oh, off the in that the direction. Here we go. Perfect. Did you say Helmgard Holdsworth? 
Helmut half sword, uh, now whole sword. Yes. <laughs> uh, as you open this door to investigate, the bell flail knocks against the side of this room, busting the windows just oh. in time. And then you can see the the giant kneel down to look through, just as you're t- t- going through. Uh, can I poke sh- him in the eye with my ten foot pole? <laughs> <or anything? laughs> that makes sense. Um, yeah, cool? roll a uh, d6, uh, four, five, six, you'll get him in the eye, uh, half blinding him. One, two, three, I just, die? you'll just poke him. Okay. No. <laughs> One, two, three, you'll hit the say... side of the wind. Oh my god, nice. see. So you wouldn't <laughs> oh, My nose! <laughs> No. Uh, this oh, is supposed to be the face of the mask. For belling me. <laughs> for belling me. <laughs> <laughs> no Mildred. <laughs> so, I use this to know what uh, direction he's going. Nine, it's like a clock face. <laughs> so he's banging on this side of the door. But once he, when he hit that bell flail, he once again heard the... <laughs> Soul oh, escaping out of one of those sigils. This place can be full up with spirits before we find that goose. Yeah, was the goose Mildred, or was that one of your other two friends? No, or was the goose your friend? Lisbeth and uh, Apocalypse Anne. Lisbeth is a friend, Apocalypse Anne is new, but she paid for the heist. <laughs> <laughs> Apocalypse, which one is it? The one with the tall hat and the short stature, or the short hat and the taller stature? <laughs> Apocalypse Anne is short. Okay. Tall hat? <laughs> Very tall. <laughs> um, Who's Mildred? I do not know who Miss Mildred is. But well, not, I mean... Not the goose? It's the goose, yeah. Deductive reasoning would suggest it would be the goose, yes. Oh, giant. Who well done, organist. <laughs> <laughs> this room's got peeling and moldy wallpaper, rotting tables and chairs, there's shattered glass against the floor. Uh, the bro- the southerly windows uh, appear to have been broken long ago, and there's ivy creeping in, just a dense nest of ivy in the corner of this room. Um, maybe some other plants in there, hard to tell. And then this door is swinging. Uh, irritating ivy? There. Ivy of an irritating nature, or just... Mm. Placid, sort just of... Just twining around the furniture, doesn't have any... Oh. Thorns on it. Yeah, you you look in and it looks like there's a skeleton in there. I can see a skull. Standing. But there is a skeleton in the ivy. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> nice flaccid <laughs> ivy. <laughs> well, I have a Very shovel. Well, I'll go ahead and poke it. I just see how... <laughs> you hit against metal. It seems that this uh, skeleton is in armor of some kind. Oh, very nice. Anybody want uh, some such of the? I've got studded leather already. <laughs> right. I'll wear the armor. Hey, here you go. Nice. Well, go on. It takes some time to <laughs> pull it loose from the ivy. <laughs> it fits. could use the shovel or perhaps that hawking sword. <laughs> I am not fit for ivory. I shall be used to kill that giant. Oh, no, that's... Do you have a sheath for this? <laughs> no, it didn't have them. Oh my, well, it's not the giant Believe sword. Believe it or not, it would make it worse. <laughs> you pull it out, you uh, pull off the armor. It is dented, uh, heavily crushed, but it will protect you. So you can oh. put crushed, dented armor on your inventory. Uh, and when you take off the gauntlet, you see that on the skeleton's finger is a gold ring. Mm. Oh, all right. Well, we'll take that. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and nab that. Gotta hit the restroom real quick. Is it a ring? <laughs> yep, it's just past the kitchen. As soon as you put on the ring, everyone sees you as one social class higher. Oh, nice. <clears throat> social class. So you go, you go from like obviously you're a gruff barbarian, but everyone around you, despite your appearance, you put on the ring, and there's just the sense that oh, he's nobility. Oh, oh York, aren't we looking? <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant. It's about you're time you've noticed. And <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, when were you demoted to midships? I missed the memo. <laughs> demoted? What? Say that again? <laughs> <laughs> Your ring. Yes? It's posh. Yeah, I agree. I like to look at it. <laughs> Kiss it. Uh-huh. Um, 
It's, it's Cap- nice. Captain, Captain Dex just uh-huh. like continues. <laughs> Even when you offer it to Father, her eyes just kind of like fall. <laughs> 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 leans and follows <laughs> with her eyes. Yes, it's rather precious. <laughs> <laughs> After you spend about ten minutes fishing that uh, skeleton out and donning the armor and playing with the ring. (laughs) (laughs) Me want goose! Break this hoose! (laughs) (laughs) Another sigil has broken. Uh, Should we, like, take care of this guy before he (laughs) loosens all these spirits out of the the pillars? (laughs) Can we? I don't know. Well, he can't be here just to I'm sure he's here for us to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a divine message you yes. received? Yes. <laughs> Father, that kind of thing can lead us straight into old Davy's clutches. <laughs> the treasure is here for us. The ghosts are here for the giant. They're meant to be together. How do we give the ghosts to the giant? Well, first we take all the treasure. <laughs> yes. And then get back to sea. Okay. And leave the ghosts and the giant to their business. Ah. It's a foolproof plan. I like it. I think those ghosts are going to bother us, though. That's what I'm thinking. I think the more the ghosts are, the bigger trouble we're going to have. Yeah. Mm. Mm. As big as the giant? Probably worse. Oh. I don't know. Right I mean, now, I'm... there's three pillars down, right? Yep. Yeah. So, I think we should at least lure him away. Ooh. You know what? Thank you so much. Yes, that's a nice. Probably slightly better. Um. Oh, yeah. I, I, I got some awesome um, chopstick chip eaters from from uh, eBay. Can you like you do your chip and you just use them. I love chip that. grabbers. Yeah, tweezers. Yeah, they're like Thank little tweezers. You. So smart, you get all the powder and stuff. I should. Yeah, I should carry one with me wherever I go. I can grip it. Colorful. You can rubber it. I'm going to take the other one, but I'm using that. I love the moving as well. What? <laughs> so while you're in the bathroom, another sigil has cracked as uh, Bonebreaker Tom has gone to northwest. Oh. All right. We need to slow this down before it gets too much crazier. Yeah. If all those sigils go, we'll be surrounded by ghosts. Spirits of the dead pulling us from every direction. I agree. I've got an idea. Bosun! Or oh, the ex shipmate shovels forward. <laughs> Bosun, it's time to be a team player. It's time to do something for your crew. I know you couldn't in life. You tried very hard. You really tried. And you know, that last wave and that particular round of grape shot it just wasn't your moment. <laughs> I know it still hurts. And I'll always be here for you, Bosun. I'll always be here to talk you through the other side. That's what I do. Right now, you got to do something for your new crew. Yeah. Uh. See, that giant outside is right on your level. You're living in the cold deeps. And that giant's got a cold and cloudy heart. Yeah. I need you, Smee, to go out there and talk to that giant about the weather. Talk. About the weather. Talk about that big squall off the cape. Talk about those 20-foot swells that we rolled through. Keep that giant entertained with all the charisma you had in (laughs) life. Swell. Slambers through one of the windows of broken glass, which just go into his skin. No problem for him, though. <laughs> Swell. Tumbles onto the ground, stands up. Squall. All right. 
We've got at least 10 minutes. Let's go. You think that'll work? It really no! Seems like <laughs> I'm distracted. No, right? Did I just that go right over my head? Or what? Oh, well. <laughs> we just discovered he's a zombie. Is that Valet a zombie? Yeah, was he a zombie the whole time? Oh, that's me, the old bosun. Real good chap. Real good chap. Team player on the last ship. Up until that grape shot incident. Most kept him around for the comic value, and you know, he's good conversation if you've got an hour to wade through it. I always liked him, didn't talk too much. <laughs> Spelled a little weird, but who doesn't? <laughs> Anyhow, he's a real shipmate. Take him one for the crew so we can get the treasure. Definitely. So, next time the oracular uh, dice. Uh, tell us that Bonebreaker Tom is going to do his thing. We'll re-roll since Smee will be distracting him. <laughs> you were a necromancer, weren't you? Right? What? Isn't that what you? Yes. not that what you rolled? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I rolled necromancer with zombie melee okay. and have interpreted it as the chaplain from a pirate ship with <laughs> Smee the ex bosun in tow. <laughs> Because she wasn't quite ready to leave him only to Dave Jones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Goosey gang has run ahead of you uh, this way. Uh, the giant is there. So far, the golden ring, and maybe that, that portrait would take a lot of people to carry, but it would be worth a couple hundred gold pieces, 200 gold pieces. Gold rings worth a hundred gold pieces. Probably more now that you know it's magic properties. Are your yep. friends always this fast? <laughs> what? Where He's are they exhausted. going? <laughs> I don't know. Our good son said we must kill the goose and get out of here. Once the uh, giant tie himself out, but... Mildred! <laughs> Squall! <laughs> That's going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> hmm. So I asked. And uh, yes, very fast. <laughs> What's his name? Gunter Bar. <laughs> Helmut Holzer. Helmut. Helmut Holzer. All right. Have you guys been here before in this mansion? Never. Never even been to Turnip Hill, mm -hmm. except for when we come to plan the heist, we use a teleport scroll, go through the dungeon. Can you get the goose? Well, uh, Helmut, this mansion's full of treasure, and if you and your friends can help us get our hands on it, we'll help you get to safe harbors. Yes, and be known around the world mm -hmm. for liberating the goose and the treasures of old Muffy Miller. I doubt it, but it's good to have dreams. <laughs> it's okay to dream, therefore. It's okay to dream, therefore. He hugs himself. At this rate, we might as well go the other direction and catch up to them on the other side. They're going to be this much faster. Smart. <clears throat> I do. I am a doctor, after all. <laughs> something. <laughs> doctor, something. Yeah. Well, my children, I think we have two options here. We can either. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, what are our options? Where have you been? <laughs> Organized to confuse the poor lad. Are, are the easy <laughs> options like treasure? I imagine that in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the spiritual sense, <laughs> you are my children. Since I, well, I guess I got kicked out. Never mind. I never met People my father. <laughs> kicked out. You're home now. This giant, I do not believe this giant is going to leave us be. So we can either attack him and destroy him. Or, or get the loot and run. Or give him back the goose. Yeah. Wait, but what about getting the loot and running away? We can do that later. Oh, okay. But right now, he's going to keep bugging us. No, no, Speed will keep him occupied. Speed takes sure? like 10 minutes to form a coherent thought. Okay. <laughs> How are we going to be famous if we give back the goose? <laughs> exactly. We can go get him later. Right now, we want to loot the mansion. Give the goose back to the giant. He thinks he's. Don't listen to him, Helmet. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up on your dreams. We spent a bucket and spent our last copper piece to pull off this ice. And if you did, you'd never hear at the end of it. All right. Well, then let's go kill him. 
Yeah, I was like, yeah, if you, if you gave up, it would, it would never let you live it down. He's not going to leave us alone. I just don't think that's going to happen. He's not going to tie her out. He's I mean, if you bored. three want to fight him, we he can really search for the library. That. that sounds great to me. Really that's that goose. Sounds lovely to pass time. But look, aren't we a team? Oh, let's think. <laughs> what? Strictly <laughs> he, her. In order to beat someone so much bigger than us, we're going to have to get the drop on it. Like riding over a crest and unloosing the long toms just as they're hitting the furrow. Jump on him from the roof. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll have to get all the way to the roof, and then we can get him right in the eyes. Fighting him from down here, he'd just step on us. Okay, if you think that's best, I'm just saying. He's not going to leave us alone, and he's we'll releasing the side, all these ghosts. And on the way, we can find all the treasure in this place, and then ditch when we actually come to fighting the giant. <laughs> <laughs> Can't abandon our, our oath to slay the giant, I say out loud. <laughs> of course not. We must see it through to the bitter end. <laughs> Come high water or high water. <laughs> Did we take it out? <laughs> Was that staircase back there up to the second story of this fine mansion? Yep, this uh, leads up. Uh, well, sense. if it's the roof you want. We're not far from it. And I don't know how much longer that room's gonna hold out, as you've all pointed out. Those pillars are just <laughs> busting. Poor construction on this thing. Well, you know, not many people build houses for giant assaults. <laughs> or do they usually build their pillars out of ghosts? <laughs> that I would like to know the answer to. That's honestly just a good use of just immaterial. <laughs> Another enemy of our family. Another pillar in the hall. <laughs> you can head back to the hall if you'd like. Um, of a two-story room. You've seen that. If you head up the, do you want to head up those stairs or? Well, I just wouldn't go on this uh, wild goose chase any further. If <laughs> you <laughs> pardon me, I'm disturbed. I think it's a king goose. <laughs> I've been for a while and he golden eggs out of it. <laughs> well, it's the fellow, what's her name? An Apocalypse or something? I suppose it could be An Apocalypse. Yeah. You know, when you put the last word first, like, half sword, Helmut, present. <laughs> <laughs> but she weren't your friend first. No, I just met her. Oh but she has quite a staff. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> oh! Oh! <okay. laughs> I don't know what these things no, do. What, what should we, <laughs> should we keep, keep following the goose? Or should... Question. I don't know. This, yeah, this is a question for the group. Oh, we... from this way, you could go up the stairs here, which would bring you that much closer to the... Will the goose help us slay the giant? <laughs> no. Goose, golden eggs, right? Yeah. It's... I don't know. That's... Could be a distraction. Well, that's not where that's what, What's his face out, is but... for? What, what's, what's your fellow's name? <laughs> I feel Helmut. rude. Hermut? Her oh, poor Smee. Smee! <laughs> her poor Smee, we barely knew thee the first time. <laughs> Slime on the last port, and then that grape shot incident. <laughs> he really tries. Oh, yeah. I don't know many who can take a grape shot to the chest. <laughs> Rot, just growing out of his chest. That's where the chills get in. That's why he's always got the shivers. <laughs> that's not because he's dead. Well, the, the blood flow doesn't help. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we want to keep him around, we can figure out the secret to those pillars. Oh, yeah. Maybe Shmi can talk to the pillars. What, he's talking to the... We're, we're spending so much time in this room of... In you have spent some time. <laughs> Onward to glory and riches, and Captain Dex will attempt to lead the way into the next room. <laughs> Here? Yep. Glory and riches. All right. As the captain goes. <laughs> Every time a chunk of time passes, I'm rolling a die back here. Maybe I'll roll it in the open. A one or a two means something happens. Today it was a six, so you're in luck. You go into a kit. There's a door there. I kind of chopped it off. I've made some mistakes, well, but there's no <laughs> um, many doors. The kitchen. What about the kitchen, you ask? Why? Okay. The room of many doors. <laughs> are, the, are the people with the goose... In here? Like no. Cooking. Yeah. So, so you took the, you the, the time it took to get that armor out, they've gotten kind of a big head oh, start. Okay. Yep. 
There are cupboards around the walls here are closed. There's a large table in the center of the room oh, with benches. This is a big fireplace uh, for cooking. It's got like a mm. cauldron in it. Oh, what was the guy's name? Shmi? Your... That's a zombie's name. So. Mm. A zombie? Yeah. <laughs> We should have told him to tell the giant <laughs> that they took the goose and went that way. Probably a limit to how how he complex. Is. <laughs> he has the knowledge he has in life. <laughs> he wasn't that. Talking about the weather was his specialty. <laughs> he wasn't that bright and light. And he died of a squall. So, all right, uh, oh, we whatever. gotta work with what we have here. <laughs> the bosun's a good lad. Dead? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Anything they eat in here? Yeah. You poke through the cupboards. Lots of ceramic plates. And lovely, like, you know, blue china flagons. Uh, empty, though. Uh, empty. A drawer. There's one with a lot of, like, 100 gold pieces worth of nice silverware. Mm. So... That fancy cauldron. Mm -hmm. There are uh, there's one big cauldron. You actually look, they're hanging from chains, multiple cauldrons, and uh, you can see like the sunlight from the uh, top of the chimney up there. Uh, and there's nothing in them. This little door has like a swingy door. You take it to be a pantry. Okay. You can check in there if you want. Uh, Dex will go rummaging through any lower cupboards, muttering about. Got to be spirits here somewhere, and I don't mean the kind that comes out of pillars. <laughs> Knobs always like to cook with spirits. <laughs> yeah, you said all the flasks were empty. <laughs> yeah, looking for a drink. It, it seems that the kitchen has been empty. Oh, since I checked the pantry. The pantry. So the pantry doesn't have any windows. It's the first windowless room you've seen so far. It has. Many shelves, tall shelves, uh, that go up to it's like ten foot tall ceiling, all empty. No Fruit Loops. No. <laughs> can can I do like a search to make sure? Uh, roll, <laughs> thorough inspection. Roll a d6. If it's a four, five, six, you will find something. A six. Well, yes. my goodness. Four, three, five. Roll two d6. There's gotta be food here somewhere. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All this getting hit by a giant <laughs> bell has made me hungry. <laughs> All of this getting hit by a giant bell, indeed. <laughs> there's a uh, uh, high up, you, they're easy to climb the shelves. You can see there's a bag of flour in one corner. Delicious flour. <laughs> 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 Not as good as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> A thing of uh, baking soda. <laughs> <laughs> worse. And then, More flavor, but worse. <laughs> roll, uh, roll a d6. I'm going to ask you to roll three d6s in succession and tell me what they are. Oh, the barbarian's motto. More, more, more. <laughs> Two, a three, and a three. Damn it, man. Three. And it looks like there are jerkied. Flying squirrels. There's like a pack. <laughs> they even full of squirrels. <laughs> oh, they're like full jerky squirrels that have been deboned. <laughs> but you can see they even got the wings there. Squirrel uh, jerky. A pack of three of them. Which if you Squirty, ever like if you ever have an injury, the squirrel jerky can be something like in Breath of the Wild that you can eat. To how many? Yourself. How many squirrels? Three. So jerky squirrels. Three. I hit the jackpot. <laughs> 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 just, just, just out of curiosity, these chains uh, to the cauldrons uh, leading up the uh, chimney by any chance? Yes. Ah. They'll, they'll help you get part of the way up, and then it looks like an easy climb for a person to just like shimmy, you know, legs on one side, arms on the other. Alright, alright, interesting. I already said Smee. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, I figure, um. It's well... usually his job. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're not going to be finding your friends anytime soon, and seems the, the best, uh, best option to be called with from the captain's point of view and the uh, large uh, hungry man uh, back there uh, is a, a attack <laughs> from <laughs> attack from uh, above Thank or you. with surprise. <laughs> now, suppose you want to 
go up and uh, keep a lookout. Maybe your friends will be running out. Me? Go up the chimney? Ah, I mean, if your friends start running, you can see the way to see them. No? No? <laughs> Come on, man. We should head up the chimney, don't you think? Get a good swing right between the eyes on that blacker. You take back your sword. He <laughs> <laughs> takes out his half sword. <laughs> well, you know him. Yeah. That I do. Sword. He's very nice. <laughs> It's perfectly, it's, it's shorter, it's perfectly fitted for climbing the chimney. Right? Mm-hmm. What if the giant uh, sees me? Then you will be a big damn hero, Helmut. What? You'll be first to the charge, we'll be right behind you. And if you go up there, you can bring this block and tackle and uh, hoist us up. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I mean, just think just, of you'd be famous. Yeah. The man who killed the giant. Yeah, right. Worldwide. Oh, it's, it's, the peer pressure is <laughs> real. Helmut! It's nope. not the sort of person to do this, but roll a d6, and if you get a six, Half you sword, overcome. Whole the giant. You <laughs> roll everyone. You can I, can I add a bonus okay. to this roll by coming around helmet boxing coach style, draping my wool blanket over his shoulders, <laughs> and just giving him a little rub? Yeah, nice. So no, even, we'll say you have advantage, so what that means yeah. in this system, it doesn't do anything numerically, but it means even if failure is better than you thought, success would be great. So if you'd, so you're doing that. He's like, yes, <laughs> I'm brave. Brave. Uh, a hero, and so you, but you did fail. A win would have been he'd go up there, be brave, call out. A fail is I will go second. <laughs> well, yeah. comes a time that every captain's got to step up, bring stuff to the crew. It's... If I don't make it, <laughs> Gary Smee for me. <laughs> it's no right. promise. You gotta keep it to an old shipmate. What, what's your weapon of right. choice, by the chance? <laughs> Captain Dex slings her trident off of her back and, like, awkwardly shins it into the chimney <laughs> ahead of her. <laughs> you always gotta try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With three prongs, you might succeed. <laughs> All right. That's At what least make it down the chimney. <laughs> yep. Leading the way is, uh, Captain, Captain Dexter Blue, and Blue. we'll shimmy up there, try to awkwardly wedged at her side. Helmet half sword is going up behind you. He's like, we have to be big humans. <laughs> Wait, take the block and tackle. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, rats, <laughs> one of the rats, and the other's dangling below. Halfway up the chimney, uh, on its west side, some of the brickwork uh, has fallen away, revealing a small hole uh-uh. in the wall. So there's that small you could work at it if you wanted to make it bigger and see what's going on in there. Uh, you don't have any light, so you can't really see what's in there. Uh, or you could go up to the roof. No, no, stop! Don't put that half sword up my skirt. <laughs> um, Captain Dex will scrabble at the hole a little bit and try to get a view through. She'll switch her pie patch back to the Very other side nice. to reveal the, the eye that's just been covered in total darkness for a minute and see if she can... <clears throat> Uh, you can peek in and see there is within a large table covered in alchemy equipment, alembics, vials, mortars, pestles. Wow. If you could find an alchemist, that'd be 500 gold pieces easy. Um, uh, there's a rug on the floor and many books. Or no. A few, books? <laughs> a few books, yes, on the floor. Uh, and there's a locked cabinet in a wall alcove. Oh, is this the room in the painting? It does appear to be the room in the painting. You're not having second thoughts, are you? Because this sword won't shut up now that he's in my chair. <laughs> What's going on? And I'll go ahead and use the staff of light to uh, <laughs> take a look. Ow! Oh, let me switch my pet! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Sorry, I got a view into the library. <gasps> There's sweet knob loot in there. Is it a whole room? Of Cleric there? loot, even. I'm already getting into the pot. Right <laughs> Hold me up. Hold me up. <laughs> so this is the map of the second story, and that's the room you can see. Um, all right. Uh, keep on climbing. Is that kind of a... Oh. I'm going to get out of there and try to get to that room. It looks like sweet loot. <laughs> nice. You want to... Widen the hole enough that you can get through. Uh, how possible does that look? Is that like ten, the it'll take ten minutes? Yeah. 
It's it's all crumbly, and then the the mortar is crumbly enough that you know you break away, then you can get a brick. Break away, you can get a brick mm. one at a time. <laughs> is there another way in the room? We're going straight into the library. There's Forget about these ghosts. Yeah. Last Helmut, is, is there a door in there? I'm calling down right below <laughs> my feet. Helmut. Yes. Heroism. I need you to trust me, like crewmate and crewmate. Crew. I did not know this word. <laughs> it means that we're friends and we look out for each other. And if one of us is gonna die, we throw our bag of loot to the other. You can never have too many friends. Helmut, will you pass me your half sword? All right. Yes. Take that half sword. And... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very nice. A little time passes, and you're able to get into the room. All right, come on, Helmut. More sunlight's flooding in now. All right. Throw that knocking block down to the crewmates. <laughs> so you've got one part up here, one down there. There, There's uh, ropes that you can use to climb up. Yes. Hell yeah. All right. Captain Dax, without checking there. for ghosts, is sure. immediately going to start right searching up. the room for valuable loot. All right. A search. Takes uh, everybody else heading into that room as well. Yeah. yeah. All right, a little smaller than the room's been in before. Within, you got that alchemy equipment. Uh, it'd take up, uh, for each slot that you take up with it, you can get some GP worth. I'm making this out on the fly. Two, it'll take up two slots to carry all the alchemy equipment, which is worth 500 gold pieces. All right, uh, wrapping all of that up in that wool blanket and sticking it on our belt. There's also a black wax candle. Uh, as you're as you're moving all that, you see the a black candle, kind of a big one. Uh, threadbare rug on the floor, and the east wall alcove here has a cabinet, but it's locked. Um, this big kind of medicine cabinet. -y. If the rest of the crew is starting to catch up, Captain Dex will say, "Watch this. Learn this on shore." <clears throat> Retrieve her lock picks, oh. fan them like a deck of cards, <laughs> clatter them back together, oh, wow. flip one or two up at a time, a little flourishes, <laughs> and then stick the first one into the lock cabinet. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, you're, you go to put the pick in, <clears throat> and you are an accomplished lock pick, and there would be no question of being able to pick this. But as the pick approaches, it bends to the side as though it's avoiding the hole. It has been enchanted. The lock. Why isn't it working? Ooh. You think you're clever, Cabinet. <laughs> you think you've got something on old Dex to bloom, do you? Well, never have I been so insulted by a piece of bound wood. If you were a simple door, I'd kick you in. But. It's a cabinet. Because you're a magic cabinet. <laughs> and you deserve the respect of the captain. I'm going to give you this moment. I've been saving this. The last match. Nice. She pulls out a little wooden box with one match in it. The last match. Burn through any metal. Left by old Captain Flint himself. He may have taken the name Flint, but he moved to matches eventually. <laughs> His magic was powerful. It was powerful magic. Didn't save him from old St. Davy, but... Well, he left me his last match in cabinet. You've roused my ire with that bent pick, and it's time! And she strikes her metal-burning match and applies it to the lock. It melts away. Oh. And the cabinet can be opened. Within are three labeled potions. One is labeled Herculeum, one Liquid Childhood, and one Gift of the Worm. Okay. We're handing Herculeum to Dr. Hemler. Oh, all right. Okay. Liquid Childhood Stop to York the books and the as he comes out the chimney. Oh, and Gift right. of the Worm oh. to Father Vietnamese. You two are just the 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 in your hand. What was the potion, potion again? Sorry. I could be young again. <laughs> Herculeum. Okay. World. Do we know what Herculeum does? Um, the amnesiatic wizard. 
has a chance of knowing what each of them is. One in six for the motion. <laughs> All right. Pop the cork out of my... I guess in order. <laughs> oh. It's a nothing from the one that was handed Wait. to me. It was a one, sorry. One in six means a one is, a one. is good. Oh, that's, that's oh, one, one in six. Means, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So, which one was that for? That was for the one that was handed to me. Herculeum. Herculeum. Yeah. Uh, it grants you the strength of ten men for ten minutes. Jesus. Hell yeah. Ten Look times at that ten. giant. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Slash minutes. Okay. <laughs> What's mine? That you pull out of your <laughs> withered memory somehow. It's a book of the worm, or the what, what was mine? Something the, of the worm. Yeah. Gift of the worm. Oh, the gift of the worm. Okay. See, this is why I need to remember these. Oh, God, that's why you need to shut up sometimes. I can never tell. Did one. you find that giant book yet? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm starting to remember something, you just open the stupid. I don't even know. You don't even know what metal you are. Soon I will be giant Slayeronium. I think I had a doctorate in alchemy. I, 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 damn it. That's a war. How about this? Oh. Sorry. Will I be young? Uh, that's another four. <laughs> What does it mean? Uh, shut, shut up! Shut up! I just start screaming at my sword and shut the hell up! <laughs> <laughs> God. The moment you handed it back to me, they really Well, it would be a shame to come into a haunted mansion and not light a black candle, but I'm out of matches. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, uh, I assume if I have a lantern and oil, I'm going to have some flint, right? Yep. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Okay. Um, do we want to light that candle? What does a candle do? It might summon a demon. It might summon an agent. Oh, I thought it was yours. Never mind. Yeah. Um, like it's all here. of ours. We're yeah. in this oh. together. I was, uh, just... Oh, is this a dark room? Yeah. Oh, I like the. I like my lantern then. I don't know. What like. Very nice. Yeah. You can see a few of the before mentioned book books. It looks like they would be interesting to someone who knows about this sort of thing. Not the size. None of them are religious books. One is Thomas Whitechapel's The Final Sayings of Abba Silas, which is read by the clergy, but he was, you know, a secular philosopher. Mm -hmm. And the boss is incontrovertible proof of diagonal commensurability, all volumes. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the books here. Uh, and none of them are large in size. None of them are staple size. Okay. And... Uh... <laughs> They'd, they'd be like 50, they'd be 50 bucks a journal size for any. And they're both no. secular, they're not. That's right. Oh, that's right. Very nice. <laughs> Can tear out some pages to wrap my jerky with. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what kind of demon stumbled off this candle. Yeah, yeah it's the page book. You say demon makes it in the lantern. Oh, yeah. oh dear. The candle lights. I'll take some books. That's it. It just sheds candle light. It does... Uh, have an eerie cold fills the room, so it doesn't shed uh, heat. It sheds just a little kind of a cold, not even so much a physical cold as a kind of a emotional cold. Oh. It's Dr. a Hamler, ghost candle. I feel bad about this now, but... Do you want me to figure out what it is now? That you've lit it, <laughs> Captain? Well, I was hoping it would be dramatic, you know? <laughs> Big demon jump out. And... But now I just feel kind of bad. I'm thinking about old shipmates, <laughs> you know. One in six. Oh, one. Okay, yep. you, got two. you get a one on a six sided die. Uh, oh, it's just the one. Yep, just the one. Oh, on the that's success. so funny. Okay, I honestly thought it was one and six before. <laughs> so that's... Five. Uh, definitely not. We should have a system where it's a one and six. <laughs> 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 the extremes. Ooh, two. Well, there's a uh, yeah, you can see a door leading out of the room as well. It certainly is chilly. Like Captain Dex wraps herself up in her bolster blanket. Yeah. What would the what would the what would the church types know about this magic stuff? Anything? Hmm. Make a roll. Like, of no. six. Yeah, try to get four, five, or six to know about black candles and their significance. Oh. Or nice night bees make black wax. And it is sometimes uh, gathered to make candles uh, for exorcisms. Oh. 
I don't know how much so you I... announce that certain parchment no, that you have on your hands. I'll, I'll tell people that. I'll, yeah, I'll share that with everyone. No, so, no. would I know how to do an exorcism? No. You're the... I'm the church five. type from Father... King. Roll a d- I don't know. Roll a d6 if it's four or five, six. Yes. Come on, excommunicus. Six. Yeah. Yes, you can exorcise people who have been possessed by spirits okay. or demons. Just keep that thing away from Smee. He ain't done nothing to you. <laughs> well, I say we hold on to that candle. If we need it, I can make use of it. Yes. Jorg tries the door. <laughs> yes! Oh. Oh, oh, Jorg. You want me to hold on to the candle? Oh. Which, which yeah. one of you had which potions? What was the name? Had... Something Childhood. Something Memory Childhood. Memory Childhood? What was it? Uh, dreams of a child. <laughs> I don't know. Yours is what? Liquid, Liquid childhood. childhood. Liquid childhood. Mine was gift of the worm. Ah, ah, childhood. Honestly, childhood. Uh, I was going to trade with him anyway in some, in some way. Do you want this one? It literally gives you the strength of ten men for ten minutes. <laughs> I'll give you a jerky for it. <laughs> no, I'd like to have my child back, please. Wouldn't we all? Well... <laughs> You don't know what it does. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> How about we each have half of each? Ooh, what am I going to do with the strength of five men for five minutes? <laughs> what a child would. <laughs> liquid, liquid adolescence. Hmm. <laughs> Let's do some quick calculations in my head there. Oh, um, the child version of me would have, would have done great things with the strength of five men. I'm kind of worried about the the aggressiveness of the puberty we'd be going through. Because <laughs> we'd be going through it together. Oh, that doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> Some of us clearly had a better puberty than this. Uh, those were the days. Yeah, I figured it was. <laughs> I'll hold on to this then. <laughs> The strength of one and a half men. <laughs> Not to say maybe you maybe you'd like the strength of ten men for ten minutes there, organist. Through the windows of this room. <laughs> you can see the silhouette of uh, the giant looking down as he speaks with someone. Squall. Kill. Kill? Yes. No good. <laughs> Say more. <laughs> uh, but you can only see silhouettes because these uh, windows have many are made up of many diamond shaped panes. They are the windows from the portrait you saw earlier. Uh, very tall ceiling lets all of this light in to fall upon uh, fall past this lovely balcony there is there and upon windows uh, along the southern wall. In fact, the door you've come out of <coughs> is a secret door behind such a painting. Oh, I yeah, there are paintings on the wall. Um, the one that you've just come out of is a portrait of an old man sitting at a desk pondering a lump of dark metal. It's, it's sort of a desk with alchemical instruments upon it. Uh, and there are other paintings as well, one with a seated woman, one's a landscape of a dark uh, forest lit by a bonfire. There's a man standing in a boat gliding down a river. There's a city on fire, seen like across a river. Uh, and then here's a portrait of an impossibly tall black tower uh, still being under construction in a stormy sea. George starts to pull down the portraits. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, you, uh, secret door, is... secret door. <laughs> <laughs> um, there aren't any more secret doors. Uh, this one's a ah, one. Ah, we can pawn We can pawn those, I'm sure. Uh, uh, they... 400 gold pieces a piece is your appraisal. Um, each of them will take up a slot of equipment, though. Was there... Uh, well, I'll bring them along if you're going to carry We only have ten slots, right? Was there a That's bit right. of a... Trick. I take the campfire one. <laughs> there seems to be a narrative <laughs> in these paintings. I'd like to try and piece some bits together there, because it kind of leads up to this obelisk at the end. If you read them in order, watch them in order, there's first a portrait of a seated woman in a voluminous white dress, pearl studded on the sides, looking at the portraitist. Next is a landscape of a dark forest at night, lighted by a bonfire that's out of frame. Uh, there's a landscape with a man standing in a boat. It glides down a river full of 
lilies, and he's going into the mouth of a cave. Uh, one of them is a city, a great city, but it's on fire, being looked at from the far embankment of a river. There's the portrait of the old man with the dark metal on his desk. Desk has esoteric instruments, flasks, a single candle illuminates it, a black candle. And there is an impossibly tall black tower under construction rising out of a stormy sea. Does that, uh, okay, the one that stands out to me is we've, we've went through a room. All right, so we've had one painting that applied to the secret library. That secret library was behind, had a secret door behind it that was dealing with uh, a dark material. Philip Pullman and his dark material. <laughs> <laughs> the vine room uh, is the only thing that comes to mind as the forest one. I don't recall any sort of fire being made there. There was a. I don't know, keep an eye out for a boat no. or perhaps a, a room that looks like it has once been flooded yeah, or is currently that's, flooded. That's the picture I took in the comment. The fire's not in the picture. Right? Just as the fire in the kitchen is only next door. Is <laughs> it a map of the house? <laughs> but, you know, it's just a stupid <laughs> <story>. <laughs> I, don't, I don't collect art. <laughs> No, can, you don't can collect I, art. No. Can I roll to see if I can piece together a story out of these things? Mm -hmm. right. um, you can use your imagination to piece together a story, but no amount of rolling will, <laughs> uh, will get me to provide you anything beyond Eight, what is in no now. way. Mm. Oh. All right. Sorry. Um, so there's, a, there's a lady in a white dress, an elf or a human? A human, uh, it seems to be a human noble woman from about the same era as this house, 100, and, 100 to 150 years ago. Uh, it's like a heart shaped bodice, uh, large done up hair. What was the, sorry, what was the portrait before? The, so there's the obelisk on one side, there's the guy with the dark material, and then there's, what, what's the one before that? Uh, that's the city on fire viewed from across a river. I look out the windows. You can see uh, the great field. You can see uh, Bonebreaker Tom kneeling down. I'm going to try to ignore that unpleasant. Speaking louder. <laughs> uh, the woods beyond, but there's no sign of river or city. You know that this wood spreads out for 100 miles around. Okay. You're, on the, you're kind of on the edge. So if you're looking out the, the window on the east, you maybe see where Turnip Hill is. But this is where the sun comes in. Sunlight comes in from this area. The sun is pouring in from that window, but okay. this is the north. Okay. City on fire, and then what's the next one? Going back. Before the city on fire, a man standing on a boat gliding down a, a river. Lily's coming out of it, and he's going into a cave. So, if, if we are to surmise that there's a theme to this and it has something to do with the house... And on one hand, I point to the, this room, the unopened door to the room, has something to do with a dark obelisk, and the other room, on the other hand, has something to do with water or cavernous. There's something to be prepared for. Prepared for. What did you say the candle was? What does that do? It helps in exorcism. Yep. Oh, well. Well, just in case my theory is correct, maybe let's ignore that side of this building for the moment. Captain Dex becomes bored with speculation and gets in the nearest door. Oh, nice. no! I like it! <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Let's see which one's nearest. You moron! <laughs> you fool! You damn fool! <laughs> to adventure! <laughs> That's what Smee used to say. Aww. <laughs> to adventure. Are you hear from outside the window. It opens to a hallway. Oh dear. Oh, I think that's right. That's not oh, terrible. Well, that's my luck. No treasure in the hallways. Who wants to try the next one? The dark obelisk of it. terror. <laughs> continues down this way some. So just a bunch of doors. Should we look over here before we go down there? I want to kick this door. 
<laughs> egg. The leg. The chicken. The leg. The leg. Come on. We do the thing. I'd like you to please bring over that package of almonds. Dark I almond 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 Ghost Jordan. peppers. Oh dear. Okay. Yes. All right, I'm in. Let's do this. Question. The forbidden door. You <laughs> <laughs> got rated on the hot scale. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anybody else want in? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I'll Those take a few from Matt's. Uh, <laughs> got the bag. I can only handle three oh. Matt's. So. I'll take a shot. Ah. Ha! Do you want to kick in that door to the corner room? Uh huh. Uh huh. Which one's locked? <laughs> There's one that's locked. Nope. So far, you haven't found any locked. Uh, when, when you, you kick, kick in the so doors, <laughs> kick, kick. kick. <laughs> when you do kick in the doors, a noise does echo through the place. So anybody who might be listening. Well, what are you gonna do? Upset the ghost? <laughs> <laughs> the goose. Um. Uh, well, no one said no. I kick oh, in the door. Excellent. <laughs> the stairs. There are stairs leading down and stairs leading to the roof. On the roof. <laughs> and I don't think this is very much to say about what it is there. Yep, it's filled with dust and cobwebs. No one's been here in years. One stair fades, leads up to the roof. One goes down, okay. uh, presumably yeah. toward the kitchen. Hmm. I don't remember a stairway. If we didn't There's see it, it would, it would be here. Mm -hmm. We went straight up the chimney from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I just got it. Stairs the chumps. <laughs> Alright, well I'm going to look in the next one down there. This one? Yeah. Next one. It is unlocked. Kick it. <laughs> Stairs are for land lovers. <laughs> don't need any stairs in Real adventurous so, life. Little bedroom with two beds. Gang planks, ladders, <laughs> stairs. Uh, I'll search the room, room. see if there's any oh, need some dress, dressers or cupboards or any porno under the bed. <laughs> God willing. There, you take a little bit of time to do this. There are two closed doors, two beds. Uh, one of the doors has an old brown cloak and a pouch with 30 gold doubloons oh, in nice. it. nice. Yeah, 30 GPs. Take what you got there? <laughs> I got 30 GPs. Have we been writing all this stuff we found down? Is someone I have I been writing. I've only got the secular books. I've me. been filling some inventory slots with some things and saving some for a quick smash and grab later. Okay. I, I have a question for you. Is this gap in the hallway a gap in the hallway? No, it's it keeps going. It's just for line of sight. If you were coming from this way, okay. just that just way. Stu, can I steal a beer? All right, well, brown for the group. Are they clear? Yeah. From out this door, the friendly beer. into the hallway behind you come <laughs> three skeletons. Uh oh. Uh, one is wearing a chef's hat and carrying a rolling pin. Exercise them. <laughs> one has uh, is wearing a pot lid on their head. Also has a rolling pin. Apparently, they're only. Uh, one has a lovely little bonnet and is carrying a candlestick, uh, and they're going uh, into the room. The one with the candlestick goes in, and without even seeing it, just puts the candlestick on top of the bedside table, steps back, and appreciates it. And then the other two are kind of leaning on the door frame. One of them's looking at his finger bones. <laughs> We're just chilling. Yep. And they're putting the, putting that candlestick in place, and then. That one goes to make the bed a little bit nicer and then sees you. There's oh. And then yeah. just waves. <laughs> the other two wave. They're skeletons. One of them goes to cough. <laughs> I like them. <laughs> they servants? Yeah, the skeletal servants, I guess. Oh. You don't have Squee or whatever his name was anymore. So Oh, these aren't ghosts, these are skeletons. Yeah, skeletons. Oh, Sorry. okay. That's yeah. oh Captain Dex. Saunters up to the skeletons with her best dockside swagger. <coughs> Hips making angles undescribed <laughs> to most landlubbers. <laughs> and stares them straight in their vacant eye sockets, one after the other. Hello, mateys. <laughs> Have you ever considered the adventuring life? 
Have you ever thought that your lives have grown rather dull, forever cursed to wait these rooms on and on in this haunted manse? One of the skeletons responds by taking the candlestick and moving it an inch to the left. <laughs> Here, try this. I give you my ring, but I want it back. All right. Oh, that's not yours. Ring on. Their, their oh. gaze is all snapped and the around. Captain, the, the captain thing becomes <laughs> no, real. Right. The captain Dex starts to look a little bit more like Captain Dex. Her hat grows three sizes. Her eye patch, her eye patch pushes out a little bit as it is. A great feather rolls off the top, and you can almost swear you see the glittering eyes of a monkey peeking out from behind your back. <laughs> They stand at attention. <laughs> now we are this. You've always wanted real adventure, and this is your chance. Follow us, and you can have a chance even in the afterlife, and we'll take you away from this sordid mortal ghostly realm to meet St. Davy himself and have a true life <coughs> as undead of the deeps. This is Captain Dex's attempt to enthrall these undead. <laughs> you are successful. You have all the Patrick, the Pirate Yep, yeah, I think you have done it. These three are in your thrall. Nice. All right, your first job, me hearties, is to kick those doors down. <laughs> it's your gestures at the rest of the hall. <laughs> Looks back at you, what turns the knob on. <laughs> good enough, good enough. I can't help but be curious. I'll follow this, this chaos that's ensued. That was all that was in this room, though, was uh, the gold pieces? Yep. You spent a good while and turned it over and saw it was just a bare servant's quarters. With oh, okay. Servant's quarters. Oh. The, the candle wasn't anything special they put in there. It's a candlestick, which you can oh. use to bludgeon something, <laughs> as, as Clue taught us. Uh, it doesn't actually <laughs> even have a candle in it. That is a good childhood lesson. I'm assuming. But in this room, uh, you're, with your curiosity of candles, you've, right, you're, you're sure that's empty. You look in here, uh, and uh, they kick in the door, and one of them automatically goes to tuck in the, the sheets without thinking. And then they stumble a little bit. They've rolled on something. You can see there's a black candle under the bed in this room. Oh. Each black candle takes up one slot. The big. So can the, can the candle and the candle stiff holder hold up one slot? Yeah, you can put those together. You can bunch those together. All right. mm -hmm. Well, I'll take that candle too. Then. Nice. And then... Now we're metagaming. They... <laughs> Kick open this room, uh, and a voice sounds from uh, within. Uh, someone says, I told you we don't want any room service! <laughs> and they slam the door shut. And uh, another voice says, Quiet! Don't want to disturb the ghosts. <laughs> the skeletons all stop their door smashing and look back at you, but one of them continues down this way. <laughs> A uh, half sword? Mm. Look, Was that sound familiar? Lisbeth! Lisbeth! Runs down past you. It's me, Helmut. Horse sword. He looks at his half sword. I can't even give it back to you. He looks at his empty hands. Can <laughs> we uh, take up position, make sure they don't run away again? All right. I'll stand over here and you block the hallway. All right, Doc. Does that work for you? Sure. I just say to my. Oh, oh, yeah. his sword. oh yeah, sorry. I, I, I get confused sometimes. No, uh, oh, by all means. Are you addressing me or the sword? Uh, uh, I suppose that's something you can do well block up and take up space. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, me and the organist will stand back here. You uh, block the hallway. Hey, that sounds like a great use of. And if the giant should come through, then I shall be brandished mightily. Yes, yeah, and I'll, I'll dump the whole Herculean I'll make you into ten men for ten minutes or whatever. <laughs> mightily brandished? The, uh, there is a hook-handed, uh, tall-hatted, blonde uh, person standing at the door now, leaning with a dagger in hand, sort of just playing on their hook and taking you all in. <laughs> you made some new friends, Helmut. Giant hunters? What are you guys doing here? You don't look like you can kill a giant. <laughs> you don't look like you could lay an egg. Where's the goose? <laughs> <laughs> you can see beyond. At the 
front of the servants' quarters within, crouched, cape covering up mouth, hat down, focusing, staring out the window intently, holding the goose's mouth shut. Uh, is uh, the evident magic user of the bunch, Apocalypse Anne. She looks over her shoulder and says, We're about to make a break for it. We think the giant's on the other side of the house. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the goose. <laughs> no! For safekeeping. It's the giant comes. I don't know if you guys remember, but last time he uh, out his stride caught you. Branches <laughs> a, a glowing, uh, a staff glowing with a oh, fire. Come on, it's simple mathematics. You've got what? Maybe three feet of coverage between one leg and the other? He's got at least 12, if not like 20. How big? I only had him for a moment. The giant bell really got in the way of my calculations earlier. <laughs> so, you know. He's a big boy. Yeah, running away from the giant is a, a silly uh, concept. Maybe, maybe calm down there, uh, Raggedy Ann. I mean, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Talk there's another one called for. Yes, that's one. Thank you. There's got to be some way out of here, says the uh, person with the hook. Well, there is, <laughs> and there's a way you can make that giant go away. Yes, Father. The thing is, you've sinned greatly by stealing. Stealing that goose, and I think you should donate it to the church. You could take that goose over our dead body, Andre. And the right. goose that stands in front I don't of you. think they're buying it on the account of you being excommunicado. I didn't say I was excommunicado. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just, they just didn't want me in that particular parish, that's all. <laughs> what do you call that? Uh, get, you know, get, get lost? <laughs> uh, get lost, yeah. You distract them. If you distract the curse, the good priest okay. call Everybody call touch one in. goose. <laughs> we do the what now? Distract the giant. Cover my escape. Give everybody golden eggs. You're just going to come back later and give us golden eggs? <laughs> Eyes narrow. <laughs> let's let's Sneer. see if we can make it lay an egg right now. Yeah. I don't even okay. know it lays all the eggs. Trying. <laughs> like squeezing. <Yeah. laughs> but if you squeeze it, it starts to honk. <laughs> Let me try. I've always had a way with geese. No. Uh, perhaps she's stressed, you know, the whole kidnapping and running about scenario and, and you know, the kidnapping. And having to look at your face. Give her some squirrel jerk. Well, that, that's not be Captain personal. Why not? Right what else is there? Like I'll muffle the goose. You squeeze. Holding up what? He has a big fluffy little blanket. Nice. You could have some jerky. That might calm it down. Put the blanket on its head. She's still holding the body. Oh god, don't kill it! <laughs> Unless that'll give us eggs. Alright. This is a six. It's not. <laughs> Muffled from within. It struggles. Apocalypse Anne struggles to hold on to it. She can get a four, five, six. She can keep her grip. <laughs> Calm down! Good hands. That spicy seagull. <laughs> Whatever you've done before, you definitely have sinned. I'm in agree with the organist. <laughs> that was awful to watch. <laughs> Helmut has not sinned. Helmut, do not go to the down place to sink. You've been with us the whole time, Helmut. Helmut, everyone goes to the down place. <laughs> everyone goes to the way. So I don't want you to go. But at least you'll be famous when you do. Think of the songs. Wow. That you so is it famed on there? If you help us get that goose. <laughs> we all get the goose together, and how about that? If we get the goose out yeah. of here, then we can all have golden eggs for the rest of our life. But we have to get the goose out. I, I do have one side question. It might not be too relevant to our situation, but there were ghosts unleashed in this building, and you, you sent the skeletons down that hallway to smash open doors? I just oh. want to clarify. <laughs> well, uh, the situation might be evolving as we're talking. You know, and squeezing geese for unseemly reasons. <laughs> I don't believe in evolution. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that for a variety of reasons. Another door is kicked open over here by a skeleton. 
It comes back and it looks back at you and salutes. Good job, crewmate. <laughs> Fetch us the loot out of there, will ya? <laughs> Where do you think giants came from? Other giants, yes. obviously. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get into this right now. Here's some secular literature <laughs> we're gonna read. More jerky rap? You are you are literate, aren't you? <laughs> So. What does that mean? Oh, well, for never mind. <laughs> Friend, go in beard. Says the giant. Oh. Smee is always cold, so might actually be kind of into that. <laughs> <laughs> and Smee has no sense of smell, <laughs> so like a little cozy spot and a stinky giant beard, they could they could work out for Smee. I feel like we've run out of time. <laughs> um, what was in this room then? Uh, they kick open that door and proceed to grope around to quote unquote loot it as they've been commanded. Within, there's a small fireplace on the north wall. Quite a small chimney. It'd be harder to squeeze through and it would just take more time. There's an armchair in front of the place. Uh, the windows here are mostly smashed on the south. Um, there's a large bed. Uh, and the skeleton pulls out from under the bed a chest. Mm. Uh, and there's also a writing desk on the <clears> south wall. <throat> Anything else? Writing desk? <laughs> uh, you look at the writing desk and... Drawers or just a table? There's a drawer. Yep, oh. a central drawer. Inside is a bit of sheet music. Oh, sweet. Well, I can fit that right into my book, I'm assuming. It is written for the keyboard. It can fit in there. Now take up another piece. You can just put it on the same line. I look at it and see if it's a magic spell or any type of thing like that. <laughs> It is not a magic spell, but on the inside cover of the book, uh, it does have someone's name in a lovely loopy uh, uh, oh. cursive scrawl, Lavinia Coldwater. So it on the to, paper? Uh, on the inside cover, yeah. Oh, okay. Lavinia? Lavinia. I'm trying to know. Okay, so if we sit in this chair... Do I know who that is? <laughs> yeah. Is that the same person that wrote my book of hymns? <laughs> Is it the lily lady? There was a lady uh, in a chair lady. sitting in the first painting, wasn't it? Something with a white gown. If I sit down in this chair, just kind of like yeah, kind she, of wasn't, she wasn't playing the piano or anything. No, no, she was sitting in, in a. Does this chair look familiar? Because she was sitting, wasn't it? It is the chair from the painting. Bum, oh. bum. Right. Good question. So we have an organist, or a, is it. A, what sort of sheet music are we talking about here? Definitely for keyboard, for organ, or piano, or harpsichord. Okay. Uh, fellow musician, uh, alchemist, and some sort of uh, another sailor. We're not going to get stuck here, are we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to not like all the coincidences that are adding up here. I'm sure it's fine. The skeleton puts a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> See, Skelly knows. Uh, Alright, if you had lips, where would they be? They, uh, here? There? <laughs> it's a full smile? <laughs> Scapula just shrug. Uh, okay, yeah, well, it's probably been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, should we open the, open the treasure chest? How big is this? Is it a big one? Or? Oh, this one's not All right, little pocket. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if this goes sideways again, <laughs> then St. Davy help me. Oh, she whips the butt picks out and get them straight into the lock. Excellent. Roll a d6. One, two, three. It takes some time. Four, five, six. You can get it quick. Oh, okay. Uh, I forgot this. It's, <laughs> it's working. It's, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's not going sideways. It off the, uh, your fellow pirate with the hook hand. It's not the stiffness of the pick, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Lean on this door and watch with a raised eyebrow. Click, it opens. Uh, within, there is a set of traveler's clothing. Take that to mean what you will. A uh, grappling hook and four bombs. Bombs? What kind of bombs? They big, they're black with gunpowder in them. They got a wick, you know, like a cartoon bomb. <laughs> you know, cartoon bomb. <laughs> All right, crew. <laughs> she snaps to get the household skeleton's attention. Oh, my. Each of you take one of these. <laughs> it might become necessary. Each of them carries a bomb. I'm not standing next to them anymore. <laughs> one of them has two. There's three of them, so one of them is holding two bombs. Oh, I thought there were three skeletons. 
Is this three two? skeletons? Did I say and four bombs? Four three bombs. skeletons, four bombs. Oh, okay. So I could leave an extra bomb if someone else wants a bomb. I missed her. Yeah, sure. I hope it's not the overly polite one. No, that's okay. We could, one can hold two. One of the skeletons hold two. Yeah. Yeah. It has to put down its. It puts its rolling pin in its root cage. <laughs> holsters it there. Puts a bonnet on one of the bombs. Never been a fan of bombs. Not personal enough. <laughs> <laughs> I like the callback. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> what was that from? What was that from? Just the idea oh. that uh, Jorg is famous for beating someone to death at the table. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> when, he, when we saw the two new people, like he was talking about how one of them was like extra short or something. I was like, oh, let's not get personal. He's like, why not? <laughs> what else is there? Yeah, what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> There's um, a theme going on for him. Well, you can, we can use those skeletons to kamikaze the giant if need be. Shh, they're right here. <laughs> they don't understand why people talk. They just understand. <laughs> <laughs> you can also see this hall leads down to the value strata, the second, second story of that thing. Oh, oh okay. look at that. So this is another room, or that's empty space? Uh, you technically wouldn't know, but yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. Or actually, throughout these windows, you can see, yes, there's a balcony here, and there must be a room there, because there's a door there. Okay. Uh, should we keep exploring? Yes. Oh, wait, what was in the chest? Bombs and pistol oh, clothes right. and a grappling hook. I'm picking that grappling hook. That smells like adventure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so do those clothes. Bombs. Bombs. <laughs> um, you put the clothes on the skeletons, too. <laughs> <laughs> Cover up. <laughs> Cover your shit. That's probably not a bad. I'd, I'd prefer that, actually. Yes. Like, what one piece are you still at? It's one inch pants. It's one o'clock. Zip. <laughs> that one was clearly a chef. Can we get him in the kitchen? And a chef's hat. Certainly make me feel better. A cloak and a chef's hat. A rolling pin and a bomb. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm attached to that one. Can we not have him come <laughs> <laughs> the one with just the vest should have two bombs. <laughs> <laughs> two bombs, a vest, a bonnet, and a rolling pin in there. Now, <laughs> poking out of the vest. If we you go down the whole way. It's the cruise, and this one is the finest. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a skeleton crew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm good. Uh, give it, yeah, it's right, an experience, it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wow. Okay. <laughs> It was a pun worth delivering. Experience points are only given for puns. They mean nothing. If we go back out right. to the balcony so area, we could take a look at how many pillars are left. Assuming, well... Uh, we would have heard something, I would think. That's true. But the distraction, I think, is over. You go in, I think you can confirm be, uh, that, indeed, no pillars have cracked further, just the three. Well done, Cap. Well done, Smee. Well, Smee yeah. is a team player. Smee All right, I'm going to check out this room. Then. I like it. All that right. was it for this one, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, yep, we found Lavinia's rocking chair and sheet music and bombs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how would you put it like that? <laughs> she had a gift for her audiences. <laughs> Should they be unkind? The sun comes in through the balcony windows here, and this room is packed with bookshelves along the oh, walls and arranged in rows in the middle of the room. So, on the walls in the middle. Uh, yeah, it's a library. It's a stable again. There's no way we can fit all these books. <laughs> You're throwing them. Oh, we don't need all the books. We just need the one. Which one are you? Oh, rouse me when it's time to swash the buckle. I understand that you'll all need a moment with these. Dex is not a big reader. Three. Um, right. I will take five the giant book you all is explore the library. Uh, so that Dex is bored by the proceedings. Uh, nice. Are there any like swords on the wall or anything like that? <laughs> Just books. <laughs> Find any good books? Maybe ones that explain the potions that you all have? Mm, there. Uh, a quick look uh, tells you that they're all monographs. They're all about one thing. Oversized, cumbersome, <laughs> smart people books. Like, I love them. They'd be worth like 50 GP a piece to someone who cares about that kind of particular I thing. Care <laughs> Botany, astronomy, and alchemy are the main uh, subjects covered. Oh, I'll take the alchemy, that's for sure. Yeah, why not? Alchemy book. Why not? 
Can I gleam any, or can I get a new chance at figuring out what the other two are with this, with this new book? Yes. See if we can get a four, five, six to find out about a random one of those two. Oh, come on. You've been so... Some time to leave through the pages, Bipolar. Of course. Oh. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Do it right. Six. Very nice. Evens, yeah. it's the childhood potion. Odds, it's the worm. The gift of the worm. Is, uh, of course, the childhood potion is the one that remains a <laughs> mystery. <laughs> <It's not here. laughs> you learn that the gift of the worm is a transmuting potion, which turns someone into a snake. A giant snake, 40 foot long, one foot thick for an hour. A serpent of such immense size. Is it a polymorph or a... It's a serpent, a forty foot long, ten foot wide snake. I can't remember. It. It for an hour, I've got a potion that does t uh, ten <laughs> men's work of, worth of work for ten minutes. Ten minutes, that's it. That's it. Mm. And the snake potion is <laughs> one hour. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. And you can't quit early. I'll be. You're done. <laughs> My potion will make me. If it lasts forever. longer than an hour, talk to your doctor. One hour. <laughs> Time passes while this ends. Um. One question. Uh, you said earlier something about healing requiring a combination of things. Food, magic, and rest. Does it require all three of those things? Any two. Any two. Okay. Yeah. And magic has to be like healing magic. Yeah. I want to eat a jerky and nap while they're all cruising. Are you hurt? Uh, yes. Yeah, so hit by a giant bell. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> He's had a big old bruise on his back. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. All right, you rest, your body, you know, kind of readjusts everything that got put out of place. Just Wolverine back together. <laughs> Honestly, we were sleeping and have the skeleton carry you. Okay. Hey, can I have one of those jerkies? As Elizabeth, who once again is following you, leaning in the doorway of the room and uh, playing with dagger and hook. Can I have one of those geese? She is a Helmgard's <laughs> friend, right? The, the, Helmgard, the, the, the hooked one is the Helmgard's friend. Yep. The other one is just... <laughs> The, the one holding the geese is the one you gotta watch out. I don't really know what our dynamics are. <laughs> Just, you do this a lot and it makes me unhappy. I, I don't mean to be mean they, to Helmgard, they but flip I... Flip the dagger coolly around their finger and then uh, sheath it. And then hold up <laughs> hook and hand like this. Yeah, she seems to be unimpressed with our captain. And, you give me uh, some jerky, I'll give you uh, a flask of fire oil. Oh yeah, the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Done! <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> uh, Lisbeth, too, uh, has been walking, limping. That's why uh, they have been leaning. Because they were also struck by the bell. So they take a, take a rest. And Helmut says, What about me? I don't want dessert! Oh. You gonna share this squirrel? <laughs> I only have one squirrel left. <laughs> Keep it for something anyway. serious. We're just gonna we're just gonna hold on. Your helmet half sword, the famous and mighty hero. Yeah. Surely a slight injury isn't going to stop you from achieving grandeur. <coughs> that was my favorite. More. I learned that word yesterday. Grandeur. I am grander. Grander than most is Helmut. Yeah. Maybe we could make a goose omelet with a golden egg. <laughs> if you figure it out, I'll have some. And do you have any jerky? He <laughs> says to walk off to check in with the other. Quiet, you idiot. <laughs> I'm going to search the library it's for like anything Paul secret. Party. Uh, it's lemon from Italy, so it's like supposed to be really high quality lemon candies. They're okay. soft and chewy. Can I have one? Yeah, have as many as you want. Uh, yes, you can. Are you looking for anything in partic any particular book or. Well, I'll keep an eye out for a book of him. Very nice. <laughs> you know, piano books, but looking for anything like that would have concealed treasure, like a hollowed out book or a... Very nice. Um, that kind of type of stuff. Or a secret door or something. Or like, you pull the, the, the book and the, <laughs> the thing goes around. Yeah, the classic. I don't think there's any room for a secret room, but I got five. I was going to say, it's a one in six chance per yeah. each ten minutes spent searching that you find meaningful books. So you have not looked through every book in there, but you spent some time, you looked through it, you haven't found anything yet. You can keep spending time. Every time you spend time, there's a chance that a giant might get bored or, or, or more things will happen. It's a pushier luck game. 
Well, oh, yeah, I'm gonna I'll spend another ten minutes. You do find Bruno von Damos's The Transformation of Gold to Lead. Oh. But that is not as interesting as the transformation of lead to gold for others. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll keep going unless people want to go do something else. Well, well I, it would be the first thing that would imply that we could weaponize those gold nuggets. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Cannon. Mm-hmm. Called shots into that giant's mouth with lead? That, that'll kill him a couple months, <laughs> a couple weeks, maybe. <laughs> It's like a long game. <laughs> you just gotta sit in this haunted house for how long and uh, hope the structure holds out. Oh, what in the end? <laughs> oh, there's enough jerky in here to sustain us. Maybe we could convince that big old idiot that he has to seek medical attention. <laughs> Cause him to run away. So, you and Lisbeth are resting and eating jerky while Helmut goes to talk with the Apocalypse, and you've searched for books during that time. Anything you want to do during this chunk of time? Oh, I would have been searching for the books as well. I did the alchemy nice. thing, and uh, we're in the same room still. Nice. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's How long are they going to rest? Yeah. What, ten minutes is all. So uh, that was it. The rest is done okay. now, and then oh. you can search again, and then everyone else go to do something else while you search. I don't think you understand the gravity of the size of the snake, and just for how long. <laughs> Honestly, the giant situation is null and void with that potion involved. Found out the gift of the worm turns into a giant snake. All right. Man. What if Wait, liquid childhood turns me into a giant foot child? Long. How tall is a giant? Uh, the giant. I wouldn't suggest like drinking it to find tall. out that specific okay. outcome. Yeah. Okay. Maybe taller than the giant. Is it a constrictor? <laughs> I, don't, I guess we wouldn't know what type of snake it is. <laughs> yeah. The constrictor is a venomous Let's see what details we have on the snake. Mm-hmm. I wish I had a snake table. <laughs> uh, it'll depend. When you transform, there's a 50-50 chance of being venomous or constricty. Ooh. Uh, well, 33.3% venomous, constricty, or basically a giant gardener snake. <laughs> <laughs> but being creepy at that size, it's got to matter to the giant, at least somewhat. Yeah. At least a 50% chance he's scared of the giant gardener's <laughs> I'll, I'll drink the potion if we have to fight the giant. What if one of us drank all three potions? <laughs> a giant strong a child, child snake. <laughs> I'm not turning you into a snake egg that's ten times stronger than it normally would have been. It's just not going to find the scenario. I'm telling you a giant snake child. <laughs> I'll go another 10 minutes on this room. All right, <laughs> continue to look. Let's see if we can get a one. Uh, anybody else want to do something during this little chunk of time? <clears throat> Are you roll for a one, one, and I'll roll for a one or a two. Different reasons. Yeah. Is there any furniture or paintings in this room? Yeah, forget it. Okay. You find Johannes Wagner's On the Interpretation of Fungi. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most interesting book. The rest of them are just, you know, history of volume 1 through 20 with Roman numerals. Chatwin and Dex has become bored. Yeah, I am absolutely. And is sniffing at some of the alchemy equipment that she's stuffed away. And this one smells a little bit like rum, and she's getting curious. <laughs> I'm just trying to. I know it's a long shot, but I'm just trying to figure out from what angle this painter would have been painting from and all these different paintings to see if I can coordinate where exactly these. Spots would have been because I know where that painter was. I know where it was in the previous room. Uh, this painter, it seems, was painting from this direction, and this one was uh, from this direction. Okay. Wait, what was in? What was behind the Compass. the woman? Yeah, it doesn't seem to address. It was really close up on her, but it was just faded. It was like Blurry. faded black wallpaper. Oh, okay. So that was this room, pretty much. Yep. Uh, back when this wallpaper was more sumptuous, now it's <laughs> faded and gotten, you know, gross and ugly. <laughs> Random fact, you know how they used arsenic and wallpaper back in the <laughs> Victorian times? Beautiful. They really so did, the just the worst things. <laughs> yeah. I want lead pipes and arsenic for wallpaper. Are you kidding me right now? Keep it, it won't burn down. <laughs> You said something that I, I missed. Yeah, there, are there paintings and or furniture in this room, this it's, library? It is just the bookshelves packed in in there on the walls. Bookshelves in the middle. Bookshelves. Books. Yeah. Books. Every books. Yeah, I can see. 
I spent 30 minutes looking for secret doors and everything, so... Oh, there's also... A, there is a bit of furniture. Sorry, a reading desk with a book stand. Oh! Uh, near the windows. Uh, reading desk? <laughs> it's been the second half of whatever this was. <laughs> looking at that. Sir. That's been consistently a good thing. <laughs> Empty desk. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tip it over and check the floor underneath it for a secret <laughs> door. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> Just... Ah! Useless! <laughs> <laughs> To a clatter as it falls. Uh, nope, nothing. Well, I tried. <laughs> it was a useless <laughs> desk. <laughs> There's nothing taped underneath it. Was taped to the top. Uh, it does I'm look like there her. is a piece of tape. Oh. Uh, the thing that was there has been removed. Oh, what is, uh, what is this? Question. Is there an outline of what it was? Oh, a wand. <laughs> oh, a wand. Whoa. <laughs> so that means there's probably a wand somewhere in this. Uh, I guess it didn't mean anything. <laughs> All right, well, should, what else should we do? <laughs> well, I'm the most boring thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the most time. All right, all right, so we know there's a missing one somewhere. Let's keep looking. Let's not bore the captain to death <laughs> as to join his own crew, her own crew. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, don't worry. Mm -hmm. I know when my time is to make the way this comes to the territory. Public comes this back. does smell like rum. <laughs> <laughs> and Captain Dex will try a sip of whatever is in that flask. Excellent. <laughs> Roll a d6. Oh, dear. Those random bits from the ultimate kit. It smells this a little is, bit like rum. This is the last of the substance in the whole kit of alchemy stuff. It's a five. You turn right. it into a It's going to be a chain of d6s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First a five, and then what? Three. Three. Time. All right. Keep going. Yep. Six. Of what's in the alchemy? The what? No. <laughs> Another one, please. Four. Thank you. And then two more. Okay. Two. And four. Fascinating. <laughs> I don't think it was possible. <laughs> you drink it. And then from out your skin pours wine into the shape of a cloak. You have a cloak made of wine. I never drink skin. Oh, all my adventures have not been for nothing. Can I have one of those? <laughs> have your ring back. I don't need these fancy captain feathers anymore. I have a gift of wine drenched right. raiment. I, this is a, this is a the, last, of, the last two words, wine wrench training, are loud enough to rouse the dead. <laughs> this is, uh, alright, just out of um, curiosity, uh, what happens if you slurp down some of that? I just, I need to know. Oh, you try. try. <laughs> oh, I like, know, oh, okay, right. <laughs> Just enough to take it's off, you know, a little... <laughs> But the cloak itself is unfazed. It, come, it come, sit this. at my house, oh, okay, my that's crew. A, a replenishing <laughs> cloak of wine. Yeah. That is truly so a so It takes ten minutes to sip up the wine to cure his wounds <laughs> from the earlier uh, uh, time um. of the giant. And gets a little drunk. <laughs> So yes, know. be blessed, my friend, Helmut. <laughs> I would be great. St. Davy gives. At least sometimes, mostly he taketh away, but, <laughs> you know, the liquids from above the frozen depths are, are so much, well, good. They are different <laughs> than the frozen depths. <laughs> so good. I could have over my company, you could have over your company, and, you know, you could give endless sermons, and you could... <laughs> Feed a crew on that, right? That's what sailors eat. Isn't it? Concentrate the cloak. You own the golden goose now. <laughs> I am imbued with the courage of a thousand golden geese, and all the captains of your come treasure awaits. Which doors have we not yet kicked down? Come on, me hearties, come on! <laughs> Honestly, keep your goose. What, what, what is the point of gold if not to buy wine? Do it with ten men. We'll keep the goose. Did you have something? Were you saying something, Clovis? Stop being so You know weird. what? I found out it was important. Um, I was just going to ask if the cloak is liquid and flowing. Or it's just uh, you just oh. wring out the wine? or. <laughs> 
It's like a second skin of a liquid. <laughs> Waterfall. Like, you're a fountain. Wine puddle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll have to tell me if your skin dries out over time. <laughs> There's no, there's just there's no vampires in here. We just see if it's flammable. Oh, 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 oh gosh. <laughs> Eternally on fire. Oh, God. That's wine, not vodka. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrifying. <laughs> Unkicked indoors appear to be all on this side yeah. of the house, on this level. And up mostly on that level as well. I thought your skeletons were at this already. Oh, well, look at that big crew! To the kicking! <laughs> <laughs> One of them goes out on the balcony and kicks in this door from that side. They're getting creative. Uh, they're getting creative. It's dangerous. Now that they've been the fully clothed. <laughs> they're starting to remember. We're alive. We were servants. Fuck this place. Uh, if you follow, this is a dressing room. Floor to ceiling. Locked wardrobes. You try them and see they're locked. Uh... Well, this is where somebody got dressed. There's a big old door, or door, mirror in the center of the room, eight foot by five foot, uh, worth 500 gold pieces, but very bulky, obviously, to take up your hands to carry it around. Um, with a very nice gold gilt. And within, you look at it, and there is a reflection of the man with the black beard who was in this portrait. In the mirror, his reflection uh, is trying on clothes. Going to the logo, trying a bunch of different clothes, different ascots on one. This was a noble person, light, wasn't it? Light orange pastel. Mm -hmm. Do they but have... He's got a, rings in his hands. Have, a have a scabbard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for a thin rapier. It wouldn't work for that. Well, I'm sort of afraid. Never mind, I was gonna ask his opinion on that one. Anything to put his mouth into a sleeve. Uh, but, no such thing. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes, yes. Well, no. here was a master who could have had style. Look at that ascot. <laughs> well, we can find the so, ascot. Uh, you tell me where. Which, where, which one is it? <laughs> You find the order. It is locked. The ascot drawer. drawer. <laughs> it's is it locked. You say. So he. It is. I all say. right, all right. Are That's the bendy the one. Past? Is this like a? Recording? This one's the other bendy one like from the magic before. <laughs> this is the less bendy one. I'll try this. All right. And um, you yes, Captain Dex oh, stares at the lock and sort of wavers the. Lockpicks in the general direction. Great. Uh, roll that one six with disadvantage since we're a little. <laughs> oh, you've so been four, drinking. Five, six, it'll take She's ten covered minutes. in the wine, though. <laughs> it's skin. <laughs> Soaking it in. Four, five, six, it just takes you uh, one Jeez. sort of turn. Method acting captain at this point. <laughs> one, two, three, you yeah. get distracted. Yeah. Why do yeah. they all keep bending now? I think my lockpicks have been cursed. Yeah. That's a one. Very nice. So time passes. And it'll be another roll if you want to try again. You realize you've gotten distracted. <laughs> that was the, the voice we meant, the one you from before. She's going to like be fixated on this and totally into it until did, someone else does something else. Did you? Meantime, the man who's been trying on clothes you were <laughs> is happy with his silk vest. He's got, you know, or sort of Hugh Hefner's black velvet here, and he nods, and he walks out of the frame of the uh, mirror into this room. Do you make of him, Father? Is this the afterlife? Oh, I'm just can I roll and see? <laughs> I don't know. Mirrors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, mirrors. What? It looks like it's a recording of the past. What are you all yep. going on yep. about? You see shanty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's a man or mirror? Goes into a hole. You know. And can I see? A, is it looks like the windows? silver ascot was the one that was important. What? Are they, what? Is the silver in the ascot. Mirror that, oh, sorry. Right. oh, sorry. The, You're the, a silver right. ascot. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> does it look different in the mirror than it does in the real world? Yes, in the mirror, it's uh, morning. So Sorry, the hole. Focus on the mirror. hole. <laughs> right. You're looking out and you can see the drive used to have go uh, in the hole. trees. Like a lot it was lined, the drive used to have trees. Those are gone. That's about it. That's about it, okay. Yeah, nothing special. So the reflection locks out there. The uh, wardrobes are locked. And... That's it, yeah. wardrobes? Yeah, more magic, magic mirror and wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, nothing interesting. <laughs> with with uh, unreachable ascots, you know. <laughs> there was definitely a movie called Beauty and the Beast where they walked into a house 
and totally underestimated how strong those wardrobes and magic are. <laughs> oh, I, God, it now. She drops the picks and picks up the trident and tries to nice. <laughs> shove it into the locker. Uh, well, as long as the silver ascot remains intact, it's fine. Three. Well, it's one, two, three. It just takes time. So you are able to pry, prize out. I, I, I almost got it. Who's that? Mildred! Oh, oh. Five, six, seven, eight, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you hear it coming from there. Good news. So, <laughs> Good news. Uh, that happens, and then you a few things happen in succession. Okay. Uh, you hear a grinding of stone on stone, and then a huge <laughs> coming from this room. Uh, and in the room you're in, something else happens. What? I'm glad you asked. But... <laughs> Nah, nothing happens in this room. (laughs) (laughs) Something else happens. Checks notes. Never mind. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Nothing to worry about. Definitely nothing happening in the next room. (laughs) From the next room, you do hear a fire light. <laughs> the forest! 